of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord. Want to pray? The Lord, we align ourselves under your will, under your word. You see, when when the word defines sin, it actually literally means to miss the mark. The word sin. You know the 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 this spot, the gaff spots. You know, people put a target on the on the distance and begin to shoot the gaff to hit. They want to hit the the eye of the bull. Is called, you know. So when they miss it, they miss the mark. Are you following what I'm saying? Sin is like that. When we act contrary to the will of God, we are out of the mark. The word sin actually means to miss the mark. Are you following what I'm saying? The mark and the standard of God. And to repent is to return to the mark. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. When you say, oh God, I'm sorry. You know, it means you are returning back to the mark. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. yes. That's what it means. So now, <coughs> I'm just... I'm just uh, wondering how much Sister Florence is going to write. <laughs> you look like a teacher. Just keep your candy. <laughs> I, know. I don't know your hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So now, sometimes we go, we take our car for wheel balancing because they are out of alignment. Mm. When cars are out of alignment, when they're on the track, they don't run straight. They run like this. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. Then we take it for we balancing and bring them under alignment. As children of God, we always have to check ourselves and bring ourselves under the alignment of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Under the alignment of the spirit of God. A child of God is supposed to be under the influence of God's word. And under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Satan 24 hours want to pull us out of the influence of God's word and out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. When we are out of the influence of God's word and out of the influence of the Holy Spirit, we become vulnerable to sin. You do hear that? Yes. You do hear that? You hear what I said? Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said? Did you understand it? Did you understand it? You don't say you don't understand it. No. See? Explain me. You know, you know when, when uh, a hen, a chicken, a chicken yeah. wants to hide yeah. from danger, a chicken, what does it do? Yeah. It runs into the mother. The mother and the wing of the mother. The mother covers with yeah, the wing. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Yeah. So when, when the hen comes out of under the mother. The, the what is it eagle. called? The eagle. Mm -hmm. Is it the eagle now? The other yeah. bird. It's eagle. I hear it. <laughs> it's eagle. The eagle wins. The eagle. The eagle catches the, the chicks. Are you following what I'm saying? You know? So it is it is safer under the wing. Mm -hmm. So the protection of a child of God is under the influence of God's word. And under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. When a child of God walks out of the word of God, they walks out of protection. Mm -hmm. When a child of God walks out of the influence of the Holy Spirit, they become vulnerable to the devil. Mm -hmm. That is why you have nightmare, bad dreams, people pursuing us. You check your life. And have you been under the word and under the spirit influence? The Bible said in Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high, Psalm 91 verse 1, shall abide under the shadow 
of the Almighty. How do we do that? It's when we are under the authority of God's word and under the influence of the Holy Spirit. That is the secret place of the Most High. Are you following what I'm saying? That is the secret place of the Most High. That is where we abide under the wind, under the shadow. And Satan cannot assist you in that place. Yeah. That is what, uh, the, in John 15 verse 7, is it John 15 verse 7? I was thinking of this scripture. The, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. In John 15 verse 7, thank God my wife is here today now. You know, the job is yes. easy. <coughs> you know, John 15 verse 7. Is it not coming? Now, this is the statement of Jesus. He said, if you abide in me, that's a, that's a conditional statement. If you abide in me, if you hide under my wings, to abide is to stay under the influence of the word of God. It's to stay under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you abide in me, so we are supposed to abide in Christ. Never come out of Christ. You see that? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, to abide in Christ is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is Christ in us. The hope of glory. Do you understand? So to abide in him is to abide, be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Then he's under the covering wings of God. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, now, that's a conditional statement. Look at what we have, but this is the result. It says, You shall ask what you will. That's a blank check. You can ask anything you want when you are abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in you. When you are under the influence of the word of God and under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You can ask anything. Amen. <laughs> that, I did not say so. Did I say so? Uh -uh. The, God said so. That is what it means. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. What will happen? He said, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. Amen. All possibility takes place. When we are under the influence of the word of God and under the influence of the spirit of God. When we are led by the word of God and when we walk according to the word of God. Are you following what I'm saying? So, here we are in the, work, we are, we are in the a, a divine workshop right now. We want to align ourselves. So you want to pray that Father in the name of Jesus. Say after me, Father, Father in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Any area of my life, area of my life that, I am on, that I am out of your influence. Out of your influence. I, repent, I repent. I renounce you. And, and I return, and I return under, your under, your under your influence. I bring myself, I bring myself under, the under the influence of the word of God. Of the word of God. I bring myself under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that I am dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. And I am abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, I decree and declare as an act of my will, I choose to abide in Christ. I choose that the Word of God abide in me. Therefore, I shall have whatsoever I ask. In the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus I bring myself, I bring myself spirit, soul, body, spirit, soul, and body, my life, my life all that is mine. Lord, I bring it under your wings, under your influence. Take over my life and use it for your glory. I am yours, Lord Jesus. Have your way in me. Jesus, In Jesus, Jesus. 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 Jesus
Now, that's prayer point number one. Number two, we want to pray that, Lord, give me a heart. Deuteronomy 29, verse 4. Deuteronomy 29, verse 4. This has to do with what the lesson we are studying last week that I want us to finish now, boy. Kelly Mandos Kumbara Gashita Kolo Bode Maskuti Shita Manamada. Deuteronomy 29, verse 4. Are you there? The scripture said that God took, took the children of Israelite. Amen? Amen? From Egypt through the wilderness. And brought them to the promised land. Praise the Lord. I mean, they were in the wilderness. And God said to them, Moses was talking to them about their mistake and their rebellions, having seen all the things that God has done. Amen? He said in verse 3, the great temptation which your eyes have seen, the sign, and those great miracles. Yet, the Lord has not given you a heart to perceive. And eyes to see, and ears to hear, unto this day. Praise the Lord. The success of a Christian life depends on his ability to perceive, right? Amen? Amen. The success of a Christian life. The, you know, the success of a Christian the success of a Christian, of a Christian, depends on his or her ability. to perceive here and see right. The success of a Christian depends on his or her ability to perceive, to hear, and to see right. If you cannot perceive right, if you cannot hear right, mm -hmm. if you cannot see right, you'll be in error. The children of Israelite were successful in their journey. <laughs> they, they could not please God in the wilderness because they lacked the ability to perceive. The, uh, Moses, their pastor, is summary of their problem, all the problem they had from Egypt to till they get into the promised land, that generation that died in the wilderness. All their problems, that caused problems, that did all kinds of things, caused, and their problem is summed up in this statement. He said, they, even though they saw the signs and the wonders and the miracles, yet they lacked the ability to perceive mm -hmm. the heart. Because perception is of the heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Perception is of the heart. It has to do with understanding. Amen? Hearing is of the ears, spiritual ears. Yes. Why seeing is of the eye. The ability to see. Amen? And 
In a way, all of them, the three of them is connected. Praise the Lord. Because you have to hear. Amen? To hear and hear right is important. To see and see right. Seeing is also understanding. Blindness is darkness. While seeing is light. Seeing is understanding. Ignorance is also darkness. Blindness. Are you following what I'm saying? So, God ha have to give us a heart to perceive. An ear to hear. And an eye to see. Praise the Lord. When D David prayed, create me a clean heart. It is not an Old Testament prayer. Praise the Lord. Because there are a lot of New Testament believers who does not have a, a clean heart. A clean heart is the heart that perceives. I follow what I'm saying. That perceives right. Somebody can be talking, and when your heart is not right, you misunderstand. Misunderstanding is not always on the, on the, on the part of the person speaking or acting. Misunderstanding is always on the part of the recipient. Those listening, or who's affected. Are you following what I'm saying? If I, if I say or do something, I follow what I'm saying, to you, rather than being offended, you have to find out from me. I follow what I'm saying. You have to first of all understand where, what am I getting at before you make a conclusion and get offended. You understand what I'm saying? That is what Sister Eunice was praying this one morning. That day, day in Kasoba before we came, our sister that was leading prayer. That the, he said the scheme of the enemy, this is the month of joy for us. Every member of this church and those that are connected is a month of happiness. Mm -hmm. There is happiness coming. Amen. It's Amen. a month of happiness. Mm -hmm. We are in it already. And she said the trick of the enemy is to bring offense to people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and rob them. Yeah. I said the only way I feel like kissing her. <laughs> he was leading that prayer this one. And he said the offense is of the heart. Misunderstanding. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There is no other way Satan can steal your joy mm -hmm. than to give you offense. Offense is the only way you lose your joy, your happiness. When you're offended. Amen? But when you have a heart that perceives rights, you even make allowance for the person. You refuse to be offended. Are you following what I'm saying? Because offense is Satan's beef. You know, if you want to catch a fish, you can't just throw the hook in the river. It won't catch anything. You have to put a worm, a worm on the, on the, hook. On the hook, so that the fish can see the worm. Satan, if Satan wants to, to rob a child of God, his worm that he put on the hook is offense. Anytime you are offended, you are under the hook of Satan. Every action, if you don't let that offense go, every action you do, you are influenced by Satan. Are you following what I'm saying? Because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I want to be sure you are looking at me. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? And a lot of the things that we fight, a lot of the challenges we face, a lot of the problem we face, a lot of the things you are binding that are not losing is because of offense. That's why you can't hold on to offense. Let go, and you will be off hook. You follow what I'm saying? And so we want to pray this morning. I don't know if prayer we are going to. <laughs> the Lord, give me a heart to perceive. Right. Give me. And an eye to see right and an ear to hear right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, we ask you, O oh Lord, to give us a heart. A heart to perceive right. That we might develop your divine perspectives.
in life. Lord, I ask, create in me a clean heart, a clean soul, and renew a right spirit within my soul. Father, I pray that you grant us this morning as your church, as your body, in this last day, Satan's instrument to divide church and ministry is offense. Father, we ask you to deliver us from our flesh. Yes, deliver your church. Deliver your people. Deliver your people from offense. Marriages are broken because of offense. There are a lot of divorces because of offense. Amen. Father, we ask that you deliver us. We cry on behalf of the body of Christ. We cry on behalf of your saints. Lord, that you deliver us from the spirit of error, from offenses in the name of Jesus. But I give us a heart as your body, as your servant. Give us a heart to perceive rightly. A ear to hear rightly. A heart to understand rightly. And at this we pray. Even for our spouse, for our children. We pray, O oh Lord. For everyone under the sound of my voice, I pray. And that for the heart to perceive right. Amen. The ears to hear right. And the eyes to see right. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, it's one thing to hear right, but it's another thing to act right. I was teaching my children yesterday in James 4 17. In James 4 17, he said, He who knows what is right to do, and does not do it to him in his sin. You know, you understand what I mean? Uh -huh. When you know what the right thing to do, and you do not do it, it is sin. Become a sin. Hmm? Become a sin. Yeah, James 4 17. James 4 17. Praise the Lord. That is where. The prayers that we pray this morning is very important. That God strengthen us with might. Why do we need might? Strength is to be able to do what is right at the right time. Hello? Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If you know what is good to do and you refuse to do it, you have sin. You can give an example. Like an example. Example? Yes. Yeah. An example. 